All right, welcome to another episode of the Mr. Therapist and the Counselor Podcast, Jesse O. Today we're going to be talking about attachment styles. That's right. I want to remind everyone, please subscribe to the channel, follow us if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, and uh, leave us a review and share this if you find value from it. We are going to get into the show. Here we go. How you doing, man? Oh, we're, it's already it's on? Dude, I'm never... This is it? This is it, bro. Okay. We're on. Get, <laughs> we're 10 episodes in, homie. Like I know. We hit the 10 now. Mark. That's a, the 10 right. episode, Mark. I want to just take, I love you and I accept you as you are. I feel the same <laughs> way. I would never judge you or make you feel less than. Except for like 10 minutes ago before <laughs> we started the show. Uh, <laughs> I, can I tell you about my unhealthy moment of the week? Yeah. Now, I love that. Yeah, let's do like it. that? Yeah. So... Um, so for this episode, it's going to play, I think, a little bit deeper in July here, potentially. I, I, yeah, I think, I think July, so. Yeah. So Father's Day is my second Father's Day this year, yeah. number two. Um, we talked a little bit on Father's Day. You told me that I was not doing what I need to be doing on Father's Day. But Wait, I did that? <laughs> no, but you told me, like, I think you should – I think you should – you you're trying to tell me to, to not conquer the day, but, like, I don't know. I felt like maybe you were like, what are you doing today? I was like, I don't really got much going on. Oh, I didn't know I said that to you. It's okay. That's yeah. not the important part of my unhealthiness was I – when I – Father's Day came up. I do this thing sometimes. I've done it on holidays. I'll do it on maybe Christmas. I've done it on my birthday for sure, and I don't know if there's something that's like formed over time. I'm sure it has formed over time. Anyways, I was waiting for people to wish me a happy Father's Day. Oh, I do remember talking to you on Father's Day now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not important, but let's keep – We it. called each other. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. you called me. I texted you, and then you called – Yeah, and then you called me, and then I told you I tend to keep receipts. Ooh. Remember this? Yeah. And I was saying, like, I feel that people – I was waiting for people to, like, wish me a happy Father's Day. Certain people – I was okay with certain people not doing it, and then some people I was kind of like, why hasn't this person wished me a happy Father's Day? I've done this on birthdays. Um, do you ever do that? And you're First gonna- of all, I was so happy I called you. <laughs> now that I know you keep receipts, I got to make sure I do that all the time. Receipts equal resentments, basically. I think receipts is, like, one thing. But when I think receipt, it's like I'm going to I'm gonna get you back yeah. in some way. So. Yeah. Um, do I do? Yeah, yeah, I do that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, not, do you I really? I, are you just I, trying to make me feel good no, right I'm now? Because I feel like you don't do this. Now, I'll tell you. I'll tell you this. I don't do it like when someone doesn't call me for Father's Day. But like, I think when somebody, I'll do it when someone doesn't do me a favor. Maybe that I asked them to do, or like if I try to like, like I remember one time I got really resentful on my brother <laughs> because I asked him for like uh, some some money. I was like, hey, like. And I asked him jokingly just to see how he would react. And uh, he was, he kind of like pretended like, you know, he's like, ah, you're funny. And then kind of like changed the conversation. I was like, then I got me, I got into this really dysfunctional, toxic loophole in my head. Like, wait a minute. If I really need money, would this guy just like bail on me like that? Like, and so, yeah, so I do, yeah, I keep receipts. I feel like we all do. I mean, we all get a little resentful and keep receipts. So I know it's, it's, unhealthy and i know it's expectations and uh, i know we've talked about this before the idea is like we should just do things because we're doing out of the goodness of our heart maybe actually we didn't talk about it on here but we talked about it on our phone conversation of just like um if you're gonna wish somebody happy birthday or wish somebody like a happy holidays or whatever you celebrate like you do it because you're not looking for some kind of return on that you're not like you, you do things out of the goodness out of your, your heart because you want to be good you open doors not to get the uh, thank you. Um, you do it because it's just a good gesture. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean that's true. You know, that's so funny. I I do remember asking you what you're doing today, and it's funny you or On Father's it's Day. It's interesting. Right? Yeah, 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 it's interesting you took it as a challenge, or you said you could have like, what am I doing today? I think I was trying to invite you somewhere, and I wanted to see if you had plans. And then oh, it really? like, yeah, it looked like you weren't you were doing something with the family. So I was like, okay, never mind. The Father's Day thing <laughs> is like so brand new; it almost doesn't like really feel like something I should be celebrating. It's something we eventually had like a guest on imposters, you know, the imposter yeah. phenomenon. But like, I'm a dad, and I didn't yeah. expect to be a dad, and and now I am. So how do I celebrate this stuff? Even when people say like you're a good dad, I'm like, what? Yeah. I am so. 
and being a good dad could just what be like be present and just being present. Yeah, you actually said that. You texted me. You said, I "Told you, you're a great dad." I know, I really and I was like, that. I felt, I felt very heart. uncomfortable with that text because I was just like, "Why? Yeah. Why do you think that?" Like, I felt because I think um, I didn't know that you were staying home with Violet, and uh-huh. uh, and uh, so I when I when you when we realized and we talked the day before, and then you had said, "Oh yeah, I'm babysitting all day," and you think you've done it a couple of days. So then I was like, I wanted to check in on you. I was like, hey, how, how you doing? How'd your day go? You know, with with your girl, and you were like, it was great. It was exhausting, but I I loved I, I loved the the moments that I had with her. So I just felt like that. Like I was like, damn, like you're a great dad, dude. Yeah. Like you give a shit, you appreciate that. Like and I don't know, it, it made me feel like shit. I gotta do that more. <laughs> well thanks man I'll, yeah. I'll just take the the nice calm yeah, kind compliment yeah, yeah. yeah um i'll i'll share this too something on the lines that you were talking about um you got to do things from your heart um we just had a conversation uh not too long ago me and you um talking about uh, last week's podcast talking about um imposter phenomenon and um i've been going through a lot of that like recently so it was a really healing conversation for me to have it's great. And uh, with Lupita. And then I, I I, got to this, like, I guess, like, searching for answers. Like, how do I cure this? How do I, like, get out of this? And, you know, something that I was thinking about during the week was, like, man, like, I got to stop thinking about myself. Like, I got to stop thinking about myself so much and just, like, love people. Like, be, be interested express love show attention through attention through ask through being with people through being present love people and things like you know as things as simple as like when i walked into the office today i was just appreciating how the road looks with all the trees and all the, the beautiful scenery like and i went to a birthday party yesterday and i was like you know i'm just gonna like show like show up for these people just love on them in the way of like asking questions caring for them opening my heart to them and it helped. I mean, it helped. So I think that's the key, and I got to, like, learn to do that a little bit more. Have you ever done, like, gratitude lists before? Um, yeah, I have. I think... Uh, Real quickly, like, a gratitude list is something that you, know, you can give the clients. It's just, like, maybe pick out five to ten things you're grateful for, mm-hmm. like, every morning. and Because we tend to, a lot of times, just go, go, go. We don't really, like, look at the things that are we are grateful for. And then it, it, it's... it's. I think it's somewhat like it'll... it'll, it'll um, It'll calm you. It'll center you yeah. if you can, like, just go, okay, I'm grateful for this you or do that. do it right, though. What do you mean? I don't know if for you, but, like, for me, I can go through the motions of a gratitude list. Like a drive-by gratitude or something yeah, like that? Yeah, kind of like, yeah, I'm grateful for this, 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 and this. But, like, there's, like, an intention behind or even, like, sitting, thinking about what it would be like without your wife, without your daughter, oh, yeah. without your – thinking. What, what would it be like if – you know what you were gonna eat today. You're going on Victor Franco on me right now. No, yeah, <laughs> no. Anyway, like just like that, like that deepness of it, right? Like, like that's what I'm saying. Versus like I'm grateful for this, 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 and this. I just think it's uh, but yeah. When yeah. I say a, a drive, why did you ask me that? Why did I ask you that? You said, "Have you ever done a gratitude list?" Before? Well, because you were just talking about like trying to appreciate the moments, be present. So, and uh, I think a gratitude list. I, I've noticed I don't do it as often as I should, but. When I'm finally maybe rushed through where I where I need to get to, then I'm like, man, I'm like, why didn't I just settle down and and take a moment to reflect on what I'm grateful for and going through those things? I think that would help. Like I said, help me center. Um, yeah. It's just something practicing nice as well. Kind of like we more. talked about before in a previous episode, like the idea of just sitting with things, uh, the quiet meditation. How it's a struggle for me at times. So yeah. that's um, yeah, that's why I brought up the yeah. gratitude list. Just being grateful. Yeah. Last like random topic. How's your therapy search going? You son of a bitch. <laughs> um, I actually found one. Uh, I'd found a therapist. I reached out to her. Uh, it was in person. It, it, th- that doesn't matter. But once, uh, it, it only found one. But the one um, she could only do, uh, e- or she couldn't do any evenings or any weekends at all. It was like Monday through Friday, like the times that I work. Okay. And for me to to really be present to do like therapy, I I can't be at work. So um, there's one this weekend. I was gonna look and I didn't look. So it has not been a success because I'm not putting it as a priority. Where so is she located? She was in Newport Beach. Oh, close to work. Yeah. So it was like one of those ideas. 
I was like, oh, I can, I can go to work and it'd be like right there. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not looking at them. I'm kind of looking outside of like my main where I live right now. So would you ever either call in to go to therapy or adjust your schedule at work? So you go to th- have an hour to go to therapy and come back right off the top of my head. Truth, like honest thought. I don't know if like work would allow me to do that well, it's to like adjust a, my schedule. Like it's an appointment, not adjust it for every oh, week. It's like, a but it'd be an appointment or like, a, but I, I want had, it to be once a week though, but I don't think I could have oh, an okay. appointment once yeah. a week. So I think the way that my, the company's designed, it wouldn't, true, yeah. wouldn't allow me. So that's, that's a flexibility I don't have, unfortunately, in my position. But, I mean, I, it is an important thing. So, but so you got a therapist. You felt like. Well, I was like, I them. found one. There was one there, and I was like, great. And like I said, I'm kind of at this point in time. I'm just willing to do it so yeah. I could just do it. Um, but, yeah, it, it fell flat. And I, I don't know if I was disenchanted by it. Uh, and then I'm like, ah, screw it. I'm not going to do it anymore. But then. Uh, we were just talking with one of our guests about like you know things come up and you make a priority you make things a priority right yeah. so um, maybe I'm not making it so much a priority it's in the back of my mind it's there it's like a, a thing of like it's kind of like one of those things where somebody texts me I was like I gotta make sure I reach out to that person yeah. uh, they text me like a few days ago let me respond um, but, but something about this therapist drew you like you were searching through and you decided no this it was way, just or? like this one works there's uh, really like at this point in time like I'm just kind of, I just want to find somebody yeah, so yeah. so I can start the process of just like um, being like a, a person of my word and just like like putting this in the action. And because yeah. I, don't, I, I don't, if I'm waiting for this perfect like setup or whatever, um, I use that word perfect loosely. I don't think it's going to yeah. be perfect, but um, sure, there are probably some things that I am looking for. Uh, but at this point in time, I just want to talk to somebody. somebody. Yeah, yeah. So that's interesting, man. Cool. Um, no, I wanted to bring this up because I had mentioned this before we got into this. Like, if we had to have any guests on the show, who would you have? Um, it could be I so could, many, it, so many good ones. I could reference like dead or alive. Um, but uh, I mean, I real or yeah. No, for you, who would who would you have on the show? Yeah, I think. I mean, there's so many people that come to mind, uh, but one person who I've recently been back on their podcasts, and they're so inspirational and motivational. Uh, Ed Milet. Do you know who he is? No. Who Ed is Ed Milet? He's a he's like a uh, like a a business coach, a speaker, entrepreneur. He lives yeah. in uh, Laguna Beach, and uh, he's got like a bunch of companies, super successful. But he's like I. What I love about him and what makes him different from all the other billionaires who are like giving motivational speeches is he like he's very spiritual, very like connected. He's a billionaire. I think so. Yeah. Damn, okay. He's connected to God. Um, and he's very, he has a kind manner about him. It's almost like therapist elements, you know? So I think I connect with that sort of like self compassion, kindness type of approach versus, uh, maybe the tougher guys who are like, you just gotta do it, you know? <laughs> so yeah. How about you? That would be the one that right there. The, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I probably have Dave Batista on. Yeah. <laughs> the one and only. How is he? Like, is he a good personality? Like, uh, he's 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 a wrestler, so he's, a, whoa, whoa, he's whoa. an entertainer, right? Wait, is that where we're gonna put, we're gonna put him in a box here? No, we're not. I'm sorry, Dave. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, just because he wore more than a wrestler. Yeah, he's more than a wrestler. He's yeah. a, he's a performer. He's an artist. So, um, I mean, I guess I think of like probably musicians as well. Like, I guess uh, people that have passed away. I think about like like Kurt Cobain or like uh, maybe like Chris Cornell from he was in Soundgarden. I mean, these people have passed away. I, I don't know. I mean, I think. Those people right there, they fascinate me. I think there's some people that are like in recovery. And I guess, unfortunately, it's probably like celebrities because it's people that are like, could we ever have a person on like this show? But like maybe like a Robert Downey Jr. Elon or, Musk. Uh, I don't know. You would want him on the show? I mean, he's interesting. He's interesting. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. Like that's that's uh, that's. Yeah, Someone probably. Who's gonna get us some views? <laughs> <So> <laughs> like, he, is this a guest that you just want people on that are gonna like promote the show and be not huge? Not promote the show, but like we gotta find a way to. get For out me, there. it's like these people that I have on are like people I'd want to have like some real conversation and ask them like some questions. So, yeah, yeah I want you to think about this a little bit longer. Who yeah, who I inspired already, these people? Like my answer. <laughs> you did not like Jesus Christ. Is somebody I, I actually thought show. I was okay yeah. with that response. I know you, you think I gave you some googly eyes or something. No, you gave me a look. You were like. 
You get, it was like I did not do an eye roll. Like, no, I did not do an eye roll. It so. looked like you wanted to, though. No, no. So I'm, I was open to any interpretation yeah. on that. So uh, today's subject, I told you that um, I'd mentioned Maverick and Goose. And for the people that are listening right now, Ooh. he did that exactly. You sound like an owl when I said this, when you right? Say goose, I think about Affleck. I know Affleck's a duck. <sighs> so Affleck. you told me you watched Top Gun on the, the first one. So it's a, So I was on a plane. On the way back, watching from Top Gun. Miami. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, and I was like, let's watch some Top Gun. The original Top Gun. The original Top Gun. Okay, and um, I still remember the music because they use the same music throughout this throughout the movie, right? Okay, like that. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was it was good. I fell asleep. I was tired. <laughs> it was that was that good, right? But I thought it would could had potential, and and everyone loves the Maverick one. So the newest one that came yeah. out a couple of years I ago. Sound like an old man. <laughs> the, the Maverick, Maverick one, yeah, yeah. You know? The TikTok. So you're starting <laughs> to sound like me more and more. I so, know. um, but no, I said on this this topic today, we're going to talk about attachment styles. But I said, so I'm Tom Cruise. You are Maverick, and I'm going to be Goose on this one. You're going to take the lead here. So uh, attachment styles, what are attachment styles? What does that mean? Why is that important for our, our audience to know about? Yeah, so I, I brought up the topic so we can talk about it in here because I got approached by, um, by someone on Instagram to do a live, and we were talking about attachment styles. And so I, I started getting on this hype train about like, oh, that's kind of a cool concept to talk about. But atta- the way the the simplest form of attachment style explanation for attachment styles, I would say, it's just it's how we do relationships, right? Like it's our style of how we do relationships. It's how we function in relationships, healthy and unhealthy, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. There's no yeah, like and so you know the style is characterized by the feelings we feel, the reactions we have, the behaviors we display, the thoughts that we have in relationships. And so I don't want to put everybody in a box, but it kind of does put people in a box. It's like, you know, certain cate- certain people, you know, they, they react and respond a certain type of way to maybe the same stimuli. And so how you respond to that stimuli is the attachment box that you fall into, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So um, do you want to go over them? Should we like? Yeah, we can go. You said there's four in total, four. right? So go ahead. Give me like what each attachment style is and like. Yeah, just if you could break it down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, for here. sure. So I, you know, I've been in the field of attachment for the past twenty five years, and so I've done a lot of research. And no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I really <laughs> some imposter syndrome is coming up right now. <laughs> so yeah, so I've done some research around this, and a lot of therapy. Real quick, let me ask you though you you've heard of attachment style before, but you weren't really drawn to it as a no, therapist, yeah, or I, was because I mean everybody clinically I think there are people some people are drawn to certain things than others right certain modalities so for yeah. you like you've heard of attachment style but was it something like you didn't initially connect on well, attachment style is talking about like the concept of attachment which really if we break that definition down it means our connection with with other people right and yeah. um, it really talks about like the early research talks about the connection you have with a caregiver like a parent a mom a dad from very early on dictates who you are, you know, how you feel, your self-esteem, how you do in relationships. So I, I was familiar with it. I mean, my whole uh, education and degree is around attachment styles, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. But the concept itself, yeah, you're right. I never was like, oh, like this is my thing. Um, but it, it, I mean, it's important for me to, to, to dive re- into research and to get, learn about it and talk about it because it's a thing in relationships and I'm a relationship therapist. So, yeah. But the four attachment styles are there's inse- there's anxious attachment um avoidant attachment a uh, fearful avoidant attachment and secure attachment and so i will talk about i guess i'll break down a little bit of yeah, a just summary give me like give me like anxious attachment what can that look like for yeah. somebody and then so when i think about anxious attachment it's um this sort of insecure sort of scared of rejection you know sort of maybe like low self-esteem even feeling like maybe you don't bring much to the relationship almost feeling like maybe your partner brings more than 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 what you can bring them and so you have there's this insecurity around um, even fear of being rejected or not being enough okay i'm good let's just stop with that one this one's totally me so can we just talk about this for the next 45 <laughs> minutes too, bro. No. <laughs> let's just, <laughs> yeah let's just dive in right? no no go keep going though so that's um, that's anxious attachment yeah. right okay avoidant attachment is kind of like the opposite it's like you don't really seek out relationships like you could be really good by yourself 
Like you don't really boo that man. <laughs> you don't Dave Chappelle. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you don't really. Um, yeah, like you don't need that intimacy. You don't really like. You're very confident, and it's like yeah, you seek out a relationship at times, but like you have trouble in your relationships because maybe you don't open up as much, or you don't do that. You don't connect as much as your partner wants you to. Okay, so that that's not too good, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, both of these could be considered. <laughs> it like, sounds so good at the beginning. At yeah, yeah. <laughs> seems so great at the start. All right, keep going though. Um, which actually, my wife thinks she has the avoidant attachment style. Oh snap! <laughs> and uh, then the last one is this fearful avoidant. It's like a combination of being, a f- like the fearful avoidant person, avoids connection, avoids intimacy, but. They don't do it because they don't want it. They do it because they're scared of it. And so they, so the, where the avoidant person can do without relationships and is very good on their own, the fearful avoidant wants a relationship. They desire it, but they're just scared of that connection. They're scared of uh, maybe maybe the same thing, rejection, right? And so they'll time back to the anxious and then, okay. Um, when they have the opportunities to connect, they'll like move away from it. So, and then the last one is secure attachment, the one we all aspire to be. And then supposedly this person, right, is like very healthy, healthy view of themselves, healthy, healthy view of their partner. And they know how to manage themselves and understand themselves a lot better. So. All right. I changed my answer. Boo this man. I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> He's too good for us. <laughs> <laughs> he will never be. Actually, he probably will be on the podcast. He'll take over our podcast yeah. and kick us right out. I would so. love that guy to be in our interview. And listen. He's your ideal guest right there. <laughs> Secure attachment guy or girl, yeah. right? So. So, as you, so you mentioned that you... I guess before we talk about who we relate with, I think why is it, why are we even talking about this, right? Like why is this an important topic? I think why I got excited about this topic is because I think it brings a different perspective, a different awareness about how we function in our relationships. And I think um, especially for those of us that like want to improve as partners or want to have better relationships with our kids and that's just important to us or our friends or at, or at work or whatever it is. I think it's, it gives you like a way to look at relationships and even we can even later talk about like, what do we do with all this information? Like how do we improve on our relationship style knowing all of this? So, I mean, you started to touch on this right now and I think a little bit, um, my, I might've just, um, uh, zoning out or something but like the attachment style this is not yeah like you said not just for significant others of the connection that we were having right now is that what was happening? i was <laughs> uh, no, i'm secure with that um like no the it could, this could apply to kids this could apply to friendships could this apply to like working relationships is it like yeah. is this is like attachment is it all type of relations all, all the yeah. above right if you think about yeah like your relationships at work and if you really think back and analyze them like you know, why do you react this way you react to coworkers or to your boss when your boss is giving you maybe feedback you don't want to hear or even giving you a compliment? Like, why do you, res- why do you, do you, are you a tail wagger, right? Do you like get really happy when you get a compliment or is it hard for you to receive it? And you're just kind of like, no, I don't believe it. And why is that? So the word intimacy, when it's used, when I use it with, um, sometimes I don't want to say a majority with people, but I noticed that the, the, defining the word intimacy, that could, I think people often equate that to like sex yeah right and i i don't know that's not what it is an intimate relationship is something that we have i believe yeah i yeah. i think why why is that word do you know why that word gets like shoved into the idea of like it has to be like it's like a sexual type of thing i wonder if it's like a like a gender thing maybe like a like maybe males you know what i mean i don't yeah. or culture i guess would be a better word right, right. um probably because of upbringing, right? I know that, like, I think I shared before, right? For me, um, it was, like, because you know, because you were a, a man, like, it was, like, it was clout to, like, sleep with a lot of women yeah, and to have a lot of women. And, and so you know, it's almost like you feel like that's what you have to do. And I think maybe that, right? Like, you just learn that, like, like people like each other and then they have sex or... You know, I don't know. Good question to look into. Yeah, no, I just kind of just, it just made me think about it and I wanted to bring it up. But um, regarding like, so the attachment style is there, right? And then we talked about how they're formed. It it just depends, right? Obviously, like. Yeah, so uh, they're they're formed based on those early relationships. Right, okay. So the relationship you had with your mom, the relationship you had with your dad. um, And 
or if you grew up with like uncles, aunts, whoever was your so it is like the, is it, is it originates in family. You think attachment mm-hmm. styles for the most part. Okay. Yeah, and like the research behind this says that like, you know, that the way that your caregiver responded to you, did they give you attention? Attention? Did they attend to your emotional needs? How responsive and sensitive were they to those? Um, that dictates your attachment style. So someone who has a fearful um, let's say, or an anxious attachment, um, maybe their parents weren't as responsive uh, in in a way where the kid felt like they had to be a certain way for them to be accepted and loved by their parent, right? Yeah. Um, and I think, I, I also feel like I, I respond well to that attachment style because I know in my family, certain emotions weren't tolerated. So crying wasn't tolerated. Like being upset, like, no, you're going to be upset, get out of here, you know? And some of that gets transferred over like I remember the other day my daughter was pissed and she started crying and we tried to calm her down we did like the therapeutic come on it's okay and it wouldn't stop so we're like, you know what go to your room <laughs> and it's like going old school and then you're like damn like why did I do that you know what I mean but it th- those things get transferred over and so they'll make it for that like I have to make a repair with that with her because I just communicated to her like it's not okay that you're crying right now. You're you're being an inconvenience to me, and I don't accept you in this moment. Well, the trials of of being a parent, all yeah. these things that we're learning. So, um, so so you wanted to talk about like our attachment yeah, what, styles. Yeah. So you you said you immediately you were like anxious is mine. Yeah. Jump just right off the gun. Like I mean, I I did I did look into it a little bit, and I have heard of attachment styles. Um, but like yeah, anxious attachment was like the initial one. I, for these four though it and I, once again it's it, i guess it's case by case but like i feel like I, I in some ways i can go through all different attachments it just really depends on the relationship once again yeah. right the relationship right yeah. like cause, but I, I think i don't want to be the negative one here but yeah i tend to like feel like because i've suffered reject, rejection and abandonment like I, I feel like initially those relationships i'm i'm not so trusting of relationships i do mm-hmm. keep people at arm's length so um but I probably keep people at arm's length because my fear of that people will eventually like they will go without me being okay with them leaving. So I would say like anxious attachment is probably the one that I, I, that resonates the most. But once again, it, it, it really does depend. Yeah. Cause we're not, we we don't fit in a box. We're more complicated than that. Yeah. So I even, when you said that, I even heard notes of that, like fearful avoidant. Yeah. Right. right. Like, yeah. Like it's like, I, I want them, but I'm also kind of scared of them. Yeah. I think for me, like I think about, like I, like the word anxiety and insecurity really resonate with me when I think about myself in relationships. Like I am this person who l- likes to please people, and if someone doesn't like me, it makes me super uncomfortable. Where I'm like, man, like why don't they like me? Like what? What's the deal? What's yeah. the deal? What did I do? Like how can I get this person to like me? How can I crack a joke so that they like smirk or laugh? And um, and I've noticed that manifests in my relationships because my wife at times, she knows that in order for me, her to get my attention, she'll like ignore me for a little bit or she'll just get a little bit upset and cold with me. And then I'm like, what's wrong? What's going on? <laughs> I'm like, She's good, little, man. She's figuring you out. pigeon yeah. from Nemo. Like mine, mine, <laughs> mine. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. So I don't know. Do you, when you think about your relationships, what? I mean, what manifests or what what behaviors or, or feelings inside the, that come up for you when you think about, man, I am anxious attachment. I don't know. I want to sit down and really like think about that right now. But I think it's good today that we like presented the four attachment styles. And I think relationships is something we're most definitely going to be bringing in here and talking about and hopefully bringing on guests and discussing like how how much this impacts us, our, our, our relationships and based on our you know early dynamic. Uh, yeah, growing up. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I just want to let you know, like, I I don't mind being Goose every single time. You could always be Maverick. You know, Goose dies in the first ep- in the I first movie, man, right? I'm so sorry I'm sorry for, for the spoiler and any viewers that haven't seen Top Gun, but but Goose will always live in on my heart, and hopefully one day he will live in yours as well. So I love it. I love right. it. Thanks, dude. Yeah.